only two. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so welcome tonight. Uh, tonight's an exciting night for all of us for a lot of reasons. Uh, tonight we're going to see our master student games. Uh, so the way you know this process works, all the students here are in the graduate school to get their degrees in games. And so they're studying one of three tracks, game engineering, game art, or game production. Um, and a graduate program requires a massive project to be part of it. And this game that goes forward will be part of that. And so what we're going to do tonight, we're going to have them sort of talk through their prototypes and their pitches. And then we want your honest to goodness feedback on that. Um, they're dying to hear your feedback, to hear our feedback all the time. Uh, we encourage you to be blunt and to be um, So you know what they're kind of going for. All the students sort of have an academic and professional mission, right? So they need to learn about game development. They need to sort of push the boundaries of what they think games should be. And at the same time, they need to pick up the skills and talent they need to be employable when they're done here. And these games are a big part of that. They work on very large teams. Um, anywhere from as a small as five to as large as say 16 to 17 people, which is a bigger team than most students work with. Um, they've already pitched the games internally once, and then that was a large group of pitches, and then they self-selected down to four games. And those four games you'll be seeing tonight. Um, one of the things that we are doing is we are looking at co possibly cutting one or two of the games, right, and making two very large teams. Now, if all four teams <coughs> and we think they have the talent to go forward, we'll put all four games forward. But if there isn't enough talent or enough personnel to make all of the games, we'll cut them down as necessary. And so your feedback is actually instrumental in that tonight. So, uh, so there are student games. Uh, the way to sort of evaluate them is sort of these are indie games, right? And even though they'll be making them over the course of three semesters, what that really ends up looking like is about four man months, right? because they're only working on them, say, anywhere from um, eight to 20 hours a week. And they're all, and they have you know, breaks in there and all that kind of stuff. So it works out to be a, a fairly short dev cycle if you think about it. And what you want to say is, is this a game that can fit in with other indie games, other student games? Is it a game that has to be able to get attention and to really sing and convey a point without a marketing budget, right? And that's always sort of the trick of these things, is there is no opportunity really for branding. There is no opportunity for sell a market. So it's got to be something that someone can pick up and understand and play. Um, and we help out a little bit with that. We do some PR work for them. We do some PR work. But largely, it's, it's just that kind of work that reaching out to the public and the press more than um, any kind of brand marketing. One of the key elements of these games is that they, we want them to try to answer a question. And the questions can have many different forms. For example, one of the ones we asked in last year was, can you experience, how can you experience falling? Okay, and that was, that was what their question fear and chase mechanics. They really wanted to understand fear and chase mechanics. And so the game, you get chased in several different ways. There's part of it where the monster chases you with AI. There's part of it that has triggered events. There's part of it that's funhouse kind of events, uh, dark ride kind of things. And that was all they could sort of test out what worked and didn't work in their game. So all the games tonight, I think, have really clear questions, though. I mean, the question is, is it an interesting question? Um, so again, honest feedback, be brutal. Um, you know, we need, at the end of the day, the decision to cut or move forward games worldwide with the faculty, we take your decision, your input very, very seriously, though, um, and it's sort of labor decision. But if they use it well, they're going to go well, that's not all about the night. So, um, well, gonna, we can do your first name, where you're from, and put in your name, what your position is, so that students know where they're, where it's coming from. We can start with Joe. All right, Joe Barnes. Walter Haycock, a programmer at Smart Bomb. <coughs> Eric Mealy, I'm a software architect for Autonomous Systems as well. Scott Campbell, president of Free Play and Solutions Development. 
<clears throat> well, first off, thank you so much for coming. Take the time out to, to meet with us and, and watch us do our thing here. Uh, we are Team Hack and Hide. My name is Zach Truscott. This is Andrew Witz. The rest of our team in the back here, we have Vibov, Chris, Nick, AJ, Max, and Kiran. So student loan debt is currently the largest type of consumer debt in the United States, reaching about $1 trillion in 2013. And the defaulted student loan portfolio is worth about $60 billion to the U.S. government and the Department of Education. And right now, one in five households, households owe about $25,000 in student debt. That means that sitting in this room, there's definitively more than $500,000 in student loan debt. As most of us know, student loan debt is the only type of consumer debt that does not go away after the declaration of bankruptcy. In our game, the Department of Education holds a ruthless grasp on all the records and loans in the nation. Within the headquarters of the Department of Education, they house a computer deep within a vault that holds these records. Entering our protagonists, we have a, two post-college graduate students, one a hacker and one a point man, and their mission, their goal is to infiltrate the Department of Education and destroy that computer. And doing so wipes out all student debt. Now let's introduce you to our world of the game. Hi, this is Linda Barnes from Executive Accounting. I'm having trouble logging into my system. I forgot to write down my new password the other day. Is there any way you can help me? Your lifesaver, thank you so much. It's me. I'm in. 
Osiris, a two-player asymmetrical cooperative game about trust. The reason for our game is we're taking the, step, the first person stealth gameplay known in the Metal Gear Solid franchise, and we're combining it with the unique strategy hacking game within Deus Ex Human Revolution, where we're keeping it all under the umbrella of an asymmetrical cooperative experience. The theory question that we use for our game is how do you build trust between players in a game? We use three T's to do so. The first is teamwork. Teamwork, you need to build trust between these players. They need to know that they've got each other's back within the game. Also tension. We create situations which puts them, those players, in the tension situations. And a byproduct of that is trust. So let's get into the character roles of the game. First of all, there's the hacker. The hacker is a confident, gray hat hacker who thrives under pressure and loves to use their skills to cause chaos in the world. Now their main function of the gameplay is to, is to help guide the point man throughout the Department of Education. How they do that is they roam the, the uh, Department of Education's computer network, capturing, data, capturing and manipulating data nodes. Now, in order to capture a data node, you actually need to capture, uh, you actually need to access a node that's adjacent to a node you previously had, as you see in the video here. Now, keep in mind, all these data nodes are actually connected uh, to the point man's objects in the point man's 3D world such as cameras, door locks, and security control panels. <coughs> so if the hacker grabs a camera node, what happens is you can access it, and you can capture it here, and you can actually access the camera's video feed and see the 3D world, the, uh, see a, a glimpse of the 3D world that the point <coughs> sees. That, and then the hacker can relate, relay any information he sees in that camera to the point man. So where are objectives, dangers, and uh, you know, opportunity for safe hacking. So we have door nodes. Door nodes, when the hacker catches them, you can actually lock and unlock doors, permitting the appointment on the ground to actually open and close doors freely. Now, if they work together, they can actually lock security guards that are those pesky security guards that actually you know, antagonize the point man. They can lock them out of uh, areas, in and out of areas. Now, the main challenge for the hacker is a, is a Department of Education security system. The security system roams throughout the Department of Education's computer network, scanning data nodes for security breaches. So let's say that the security system actually lands on a node that's in the hacker's possession. The hacker is then caught, the whole building is on lockdown, the hacker is locked out of the security system, or, I'm sorry, the security grid, and the point and the guards are doubled for the point man, making it extremely hard for them to go around and capture objectives and you know continue. The hacker can also release data nodes as well. This is the main function for es uh, escaping the security system. So the hacker can release nodes, but when they release nodes, it actually releases all other nodes that rely on that connection in order to function. So the hacker needs to be careful and strategic on what nodes to capture and what nodes to release. And releasing nodes at the wrong time could be disastrous for both players. So the point man, he's the legs of the operation, right? He does all the dirty work. He's self-taught in espionage and uses, uses tools and gadgets to get by. The environment's kind of his biggest obstacle. We build this environment in a way that it starts out kind of an office fill and it's a little easier to get through and as you get closer to the security vault, it gets more militaristic and Cyberdyne-esque. The guards in the same way start out as like mall rent -a cops They're not super smart and you can get by them pretty easy. But as you go through that game and you get closer to that vault, again, the guards become more like spec ops type guards. Sneaking's his biggest asset, right? Getting away from those guards, crouching, hiding, running and jumping is his biggest thing. And he runs around in this 3D world. He, one of his tools is bugs. He's able to throw tracking bugs onto guards, which then allow the hacker to keep track of them for him. Cameras. We throw these cameras on different walls so that it gives new eyes to the hacker to be able to relay that information to the point man. And that way we can see blind spots within the building and keep track of pesky guards. Control panels are the way that the point man can help the, the hacker out. I can capture these and then it allows him to have new source nodes on his grid, which gives relief to the hacker. So this is what we're calling the balance graph. The balance graph has been integral in the development of this game. So what this graph allows us to do is create those cooperative tension moments out of the features that we've given both characters, uh, both uh, player roles. Now also, you'll, you'll notice that it's sort of symmetrical for an asymmetrical game. We really wanted to balance both player roles so that one of them doesn't have more power than the other, 
And you know, it's like a parasitic relationship more than a symbiotic relationship. So this graph has been integral in uh, you know, making sure that doesn't happen. All right, let's play the game. I'm going to be the point man, and I'm going to be playing up on this screen. Okay, right here is our load screen, and we're actually playing live over our network. And I've chosen the point man, and we'll start our game. Alright, so this is a starting screen. Alright, I'm going to capture the source mode. I can see you're in the track room. Yep, unlock me. I'm capturing the camera, and um, I can see you. <coughs> Alright, I'm going to keep capturing those. And the door is unlocked. Excellent. Alright, no guards down here. Am I going left? Yeah, you're going to go left. Okay, great. Can you see down this hall up here? No, I can't at all. Can you place the camera? Yeah. That help? Oh, good. You got the door open. Okay, I'm gonna hide in here. I see it on the corner to your left. You see anybody coming yet? Nope, not yet. Come on. I don't see any guards. Keep looking behind you too. Oh, I got one behind. Hold on. All right, there's a guard coming. All right, he's coming up in front of you. Can you track him? Yep. Hold on. All right, got I him. See him on my screen. Awesome. Can you get this door open? Yep. Door is unlocked. Excellent. Alright, if you go on the left, on the right, okay. you grab an objective. I got it. Okay, where am I heading now? Alright, the door opposite from you. Alright, hold on a second. The okay. door is coming towards you. Hold oh. on. Hold on. Can I go? Can I go? Can I Holy crap. <laughs> ah, that was close. Go, 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 go. Okay. Oh. Go, go, go. Oh! Hey, there's a control panel up here. Just so you know. And I see the oh, front desk. Holy crap. crap. Can you access the yeah, one sec. I got a guy up front. Okay. Oh, stop crouching. All right, got a control panel. Hold on. Okay, I gotta get, a, get away from this guy. So I grab a camera over the corner. Okay. Oh. All right, the security guy. The skirt came out. I'm gonna follow him around. All right. Lock him in. I'm locking him in. All right, he's, he's locked in. <laughs> oh, All gosh. Right, go okay. Can you go up to the desk and hide behind the desk? Yeah. Ooh, peek. All right, don't move. Don't oh, am I going, go, 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 go. am I going across that room? Yep, try that, try that, go to that door. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's right there, dude, hold on. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, go. Go, 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 go. Okay, is there an objective in here? Yep. Yeah, there is. Awesome. Woo, nice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well done. Sorry. High five. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> Sorry, I love this game. All right, uh, let's keep going. <laughs> so we're developing uh, the co-signers with the Unity, on the Unity engine, which allows us to be very dynamic in the platforms we release on. Now, we really love the idea of the hacker playing on an iPad and the point man playing on a PC and having a really co uh, couch cooperative experience between two players that way. And we, as you see here, we've kind of rethought the interface for the iPad and the point man, just regular first person shooter controls, WASD, and the mouse. Now, Nintendo and Unity have recently recent entered into a, a, a lucrative licensing agreement, which allows them to release, which allows Unity to actually have a new compiler for their brand new console. And we really love the idea of exploring porting the cosigners to the Nintendo Wii U and having two people having that couch cooperative experience. And we're looking to release the game uh, on the Nintendo Wii shop. We know that 32% or 31% of players are, sorry, 31% of game sales last year were digital. So also, 62% of players are playing with somebody else. And lastly, PS2 was the highest selling console of all time at 150 million. iOS devices as of January were at 500 million and 100 million of those were just iPads. So we feel that the market we're trying to hit is very lucrative. And lastly, Team Hackpad loves the idea of developing the code centers and open development. We really, uh, we really love the idea of fresh faces coming in and playing our game, giving us some ideas, you know, play testing constantly. So we look forward to hearing from all of you 
our faculty and our, you know, in our cohort classmates on developing the cosines. And that's the cosines, a two-player asymmetrical couch cooperative experience. Thank you. We want to take any questions that the industry panel might ask. Yeah. First of all, I just want to say you guys obviously prepared an awesome job. Um, the question is, um, the hacker's job, is it just straight up you just click on the things and that's all you're doing? You're just clicking on the buttons and then, so there's no like mini game to unlock a node or anything like that, it's no. just straight click. You didn't want to take away from that fill of actually mitigating the, the world, right? And so instead of doing mini games, mini games, we're doing kind of resource management of the nodes and having that security system be tracking you. So yeah, no mini games. We want them to focus on the hacker being more of a game in of itself, and not quite an interface to interact with others. Is this designed to be played in the same room, or? Yeah, couch co-op. So we really want to have that feeling of, you know, you're playing with, you know, uh, your wife or your brother, or whoever, having like those couch high fives. So, so the hacker has said you guys are challenging NPCs. You guys, there's no way that he can see this game. Like, you basically have to tell him what you are. On certain things, because it does have yeah, to yeah. yeah. No, 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 absolutely. You're, you're right, yeah. And I can see stuff like as the hacker, I can see the guard in front of the SMP code and things, so I can relay that information. And we're trying to make that using that graph, we're sort of using that dependence of I have stuff to do, he's got stuff to do, we can help each other, and we both can help mitigate the guard and the security system that's tracking us. So, so the guard gets smarter as you get closer? I mean, as the yeah. guard gets tougher, are they also smarter? Yeah, we're trying to use kind of the guard as a service. So. We're trying to use kind of also a System. So they start out just walking through, right? You know, they're doing their job, I got my lunch at lunch hour. But as they see maybe a door that's open that shouldn't be, that heightened sense goes up. And then it goes up from there, and then they can alert the security system, and that started tracking out the hacker list. So kind of that back and forth play. But yeah, it's just kind of dumb small talk to you know, more intelligent bedrock stuff. So it's 100% stealth. There's no offense attacks or weapons or anything like that. We, uh, we actually, we, we didn't really like the idea of the combat scenario because of the, you know, you are graduate fighting spec off soldiers. But uh, we really have it using, um, you know, playing with that stealth as an offensive weapon of like, you know, hey, I'm over here, and there's like a chase sequence, and they both have to work together to kind of trap guards in a room, and that's how, you know, you get rid of enemies and, you know, um, you know, things like that. And you guys play a lot. Does one feel more fun than the other? Uh, or do you feel like playing the balance between the two? I feel like we're doing a really good job of balancing it, and we've added those features to both, and I think we have other features we'd like to add to. We've actually, uh, we've actually tuned it to be really, you know, really evil in some ways of like, you know, cutting you off and seeing like, you know, we have the idea of, you know, anomalies being detected and all of a sudden it teleports close to you and now you're kind of freaking out in sort of the same way as the guard is freaking out. Uh, but, you know, our quintessential gameplay mode would be uh, both players have, uh, have sort of an uh, objective they need to complete or job they need to do, but you're yelling at each other next to each other and like, open the door, ah, the street's just right on my tail, I, got, I can't do it yet, you know, and having those kind of moves and then when you actually complete that objective, you have that, you know, that high five moment together, like, yeah, we totally did. So does it feel kind of like split screen, you're both looking at each other's screen, or? Sometimes, yeah, you can, sometimes you can't help but like, what is he doing and taking so long, right? But yeah. Is there a reason why you uh, went with an abstract representation for the hacker, as opposed to wiring it with a uh, schematic on a... You mean like, why it's not
conspiracy theorists yeah. fiction and stuff like that, you know, really kind of grab things as like, oh, you know, the Department of Education is like evil to us, we're screwed in society, you know, we're we over <laughs> yeah. um, So, um, you really kind of tap into that, kind of, you know, make Hollywood versions of like, you know, the hacker and the complaint and have an experience and kind of Yeah, the, these types of games are very, very labor intensive, particularly if you want to be in even semi competitive on the graphics. And my concern is that this is not a four month, four man project by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, this, this, is, this is huge. And, um, you know, unless you've got a, you know, a team of 100 others somewhere and, and a lot of other resources that I'm not aware of, I'm, I'm concerned that you're, you're going to get something at the end of that four months that's not going to be competitive. So right now we have just you know our like the key the Doom key card method, right? You know, so to get into those certain areas, you need two key cards and you know open up these, you know, go to these different locations. Later on, we're hoping to actually have you know sort of uh, yeah, yeah, VIP guys where they you know need to kind of go through that door. Uh, other you know, once he does, he'll have a window of opportunity to go in there with him or something like that. Uh, you know, play with uh, play with certain uh, objectives and and not just have it be you know a collection. We have some plans going on how we can really kind of make it uh, more fun and have different experiences for the game. and also for the hacker too. Uh, we want to you know, have exciting experience on both sides. Maybe it's everything I missed it, but I'm interested in the scope if this is something where you sit down and you play a lot of like it's a Halo play game with co signers, or is this like a multi hour where you can deeper into the level of the Department of Education it has like two areas in it and there's three levels so we round to six ish levels or areas of work. So it's not just a quick casual like what do you say you <coughs> Yeah, it would be more of sitting down and playing and not like a yeah. Okay, well, let's take one last question and then what I'd like to do so you can start thinking about it is do a, a really quick flash round where you say really quickly what your biggest concern for this game is so they can address it as they move forward. So who wants the last question?
So I, I think maybe we need to have, have more of a sit down and play for fun and I can get through the whole thing. Well, I'm the last one, so I can't say anything that hasn't been said. <laughs> 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 left field. I can either agree or say they're all full of, full of it. Well, I'll say that. So, I believe in you guys. No. Um, actually, I, thought, I think it's, it's not the craziest. I, I, a little bit scope is doable as long as you keep it simple, I think. And that you have unity, great. Gives you a lot, uh, you know, the networking and all of that will be taken care of for you. But I, my biggest concern through the whole thing was definitely the single player, multiplayer thing a lot of people make games that are, uh, that require multiple players for the best experience, and then people, reviewers, everyone else tries single. And if that experience is no good, then they review your game bad, and then your game doesn't take off. So, uh, yeah, I think if you either don't make a single player experience, or your single player experience is bad. And that being said, that goes against the coolest parts of your game, which is the cooperative and the excitement, and the going back and forth of the guys arguing, and Cool ideas, great.